Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Another bit of a chilly one up here, but the sun is coming up and almost over the trees, so it will probably heat up soon. We'll pick up where we left off yesterday, which was the vapor barrier on the ceiling, so we'll jump into that. Exactly how I left it in here, which is good because I left the door unlocked last night. <laughs> I picked up the things I needed to finish what I started, the vapor barrier. Got some tuck tape, just one more roll. Some staples, two cans of spray foam, and a tube of PL adhesive. I am going to spray foam a second layer on those bigger gaps first. Get it out of the way. As far as the spray foam goes though, everything looks pretty good. You can see here that there's a bit of squeeze out, but that's almost preferred. And then you can see my windows. You can see the depth, I'll have to put another bead in there. And I'm hoping with this can, it's a different tip that they give you and it's a little smaller so I'm hoping it will fit into this smaller gap here that I wasn't able to get in with the bigger tip there's the free gloves that come with this brand nice thread it on this stuff says that you're only supposed to fill the cavity 30% so that's, how, so that's how much this will expand, that other 70% apparently. That's uh, about 30% full. Now I can go ahead and start the vapor barrier on the ceiling. You can see I've already done one piece. Take a look here. Nothing too special about it. I went with the rafters. That way I can, again, have some solid backer to tape onto. And then the bedroom is done too. That was also yesterday at the end of the day. These ones are a little trickier to get going because I can't start in the middle on the cathedral ceiling. With Well, with one person I can't. It's pretty tricky to get up there and try and find center and everything. Or could I? Huh, should I measure it out? Maybe I will try to do that. As long as my cut is square on the ends, I should be able to start at the far end and then work up the edge of the far rafter there. I changed my mind. I'm gonna find the center of my plastic and try and go to the peak of the of the uh, cathedral ceiling here, and then that way I can just follow this rafter space with the edge of my plastic. I don't know. Hopefully that's easier. But I need a marker to mark my center there. I don't know where my marker went. I'm sure I'll remember. For some reason I have like two feet of extra on that end, so I might not have found center and I might be off two feet, but... just noticed that light box is set for half inch drywall and no strapping so because we're doing three quarter inch strapping I have to drop it three quarters of an inch and 
yes, I need a slightly taller ladder. One time I was holding up a piece of plastic on a ceiling for the vapor barrier with the swing stapler, holding it up and whack right into my fingernail. It went right through and I had to get a pair of pliers I think or vice grips or something and pull onto it and pull it back out. Right through the nail right out the other side so they pack a punch. Gotta be careful you don't hit your finger. That's why you see when I start the piece, I actually use this guy because I have more control. I can hold it up, pull some tension on it, and fire. Whereas this piece, to get that tension and to get it close to your hand where you have created that tension, you do get it pretty close to your finger. So I don't trust my shot enough to tackle a big piece like this and try and have my first shot be with the swing stapler. This is safer. I just created a fold right here, but luckily it's on the ceiling where I have the three quarter inch strapping. So if the blown in insulation does belly a little bit because of that fold, should be okay. It's not a big one. In the corners where I want to get a little closer to the wall and the ceiling intersection, I'll use this just because I do have more control and I can get into that corner better. And there it is. Check it out. So just like this first piece I put on, you can see where I stopped with the tuck tape. I'll just continue that on. I'll have to trim off this excess. Yeah, two feet over, so I'm not sure what happened there. The rest of it looks good. Gonna have to put a new battery in this. I'm not sure when I'll pick up again. I'm gonna get this all prepped, taped, and it conveniently ends right where the gas guy has to get in. I was going to install this next piece and then just flap it over like I've done here. That way I can put the piece on and when the gas guy is done, just unflap it and tape it and it'll be a lot easier. But I'm not sure if he wants to get into here at all to get to the stove. I'm not sure how he's gonna run that pipe. So I'll think about it. That was silly, tapping my shoulder with the <laughs> tack stapler <laughs> as I do it again. So I went ahead and strapped some of the ceilings. I'll have to come back and finish up when the gas guy is done. Classic. Our spray foam has set up now. It shouldn't look like that. That's a little too much squeeze out. But you can see everywhere else it looks decent. So I'll go along with my knife, slice it off. Pretty simple. Go around, cut off any squeeze out, and that'll be it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, clean up, and that'll be it for the day. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>